Hello, good people of YouTube, Mountbatten here, and today we're once again talking about the new German DD line split. So, if you watched my Philip Schultz review, I said that the ship feels decent, it's got very good AP, and the guns are good, but everything else about the ship isn't that fantastic, and after playing the Schultz and a couple more of the ships from the split, my conclusion is that this was a very, very, very good idea but executed absolutely terribly, which should be the title of the video. So, basically, the German DDs, if you don't know, the new split, they were designed to be not destroyers, but rather either very large destroyers or small light cruisers. And they were designed to go after lone light cruisers. Which, there's several issues with that statement right there and how they're applied in-game. First off being, they're destroyers. But, they play absolutely nothing like destroyers. And you aren't supposed to play them like destroyers. And it's not that they're not supposed to be in the cap, and they're not supposed to be fighting other DDs, really. We have several destroyers that are exactly like that. The Kabarosk... You don't go near a cap in the Kabarovsk or the Kleber or the entirety of the Soviet gunboat, uh, gunboat line or the entirety of the French DD line. They're open water gunboats. They're meant to attack from afar with their speed and maneuverability being their allies and their high velocity guns being their allies as well. And being in close and close quarters is what's very detrimental to those two lines right there. And those are two DD lines that I've played a lot of. I'm not the best DD player in the world. I'm pretty average right now, I'm working on getting better, but I've mostly played gunboat DDs, especially Kabarovsk and Kleber. Um, other than that, I have a lot of experience in Harugamo uh, for some time. Back when I was in Alpha, I played Harugamo a lot during clan battles, um, and I also have Smolland as well as far as like tier 10 DDs. Other than that, I do play uh, Kazakh and Orkin and Kid a bit too, but as you, as you can see, I'm not a DD main, obviously. But that kind of lends itself pretty well to the DD split here because you don't play them like cruisers and they need to be stopped being thought of as destroyers. But like, you, do, you do play them like cruisers, you don't play them like destroyers. And this is one thing that really kind of gets to me when I see all the memes about the new German DDs and a lot of the complaints is that, oh, they have terrible HE DP and they have terrible HE. Yes, they're supposed to. You use the AP and forget the HE exists unless you're in a situation where you simply can't get pins or overpins. Then you switch to the HE, and that's in like worst case scenarios. Like if you have a bow tanking BB, you can't manage to arc your shells behind his turrets and pin his superstructures for his superstructure for 2k a salvo. Then you switch to HE and try to start a fire. Forget these things have HE unless you're in that specific circumstance. So they're DDs, but they can't do DD things. And the other DD lines that don't do DD things but are still good DDs, you know, they have good HEDP and they have good APDPM as well, and they have other characteristics to make up for that, but they're still in that DD slot. But they can still fulfill the role of hunting down enemy destroyers. These German destroyers can't really. Yes, they can kill other destroyers, because their AP is that good. You'll be chunking DDs for like 2 or 3k a salvo. So as long as you keep on them, you can kill DDs, but it's not their speciality. They're not too, too good at it. And you will lose most of your health in the process, especially if it is another gunboat DD or heck, something like the Shimakaze that has very nice HE Alpha. They'll make you pay for taking them down, which isn't ideal. In a DD versus DD engagement, you want to kill that DD while losing the least amount of health from your DD. That's where the Kleber and Kabarov shine. The Kabarov has some good armor plating and it has a heal. The Kleber has that special French DD uh, saturation where they effectively pretty much take half the amount of damage that a normal DD would in that situation. The German destroyers get neither of that. They get a slightly thicker armor plating. They have a 25mm belt instead of a 19mm uh, belt. And that's it. They don't get a heal. And they don't get a special damage saturation model. You can get a heal if you have Luchins, but of course, unless you spent the coal to get Luchins, you don't have Luchins. And even then, it's you know it's not a great heal, but it is a heal. But that's just versus DDs. Now remember what I said earlier: these are DDs that are meant to go after light cruisers. Light cruisers 
are meant to slaughter deities. And especially when we're talking about higher tier light cruisers, like the Smolensk, the Austin, the Hooster, the Minotaur, all of these ships are specially designed to murder deities. And many of them can do it in just a few seconds. And you're telling these deities to go kill those light cruisers by themselves with no heal and no special damage saturation model. Okay. That doesn't work, I can tell you that. And matter of fact, this game you're watching right now, I got to attack the highest number of light cruisers that I ever have while playing one of these German deities, this time in the Felix Schultz. I got to attack two light cruisers. And yes, the shells were very good at doing that. The AP was very good at doing that. Um, I chunked the, I think the... All the uh, the Atlanta for like 6k in one salvo, which I mean it's, it's an Atlanta, not the most heavily armored light cruiser, but yeah, it was pretty good at doing it. And then I got the other. I can't remember if it was the, was it the Edinburgh or was it the, um, I think it was one of the American cruisers. I got him and I hit him quite a few times for about four to five k, which is again very good for AP coming out of a DD. So they can do the damage. And they can Citadel light cruisers when presented with their broadside, but they're still light cruisers that will murder you if you're spotted. And yes, you do have a spoke string that you can hide, but do you want to know what's like the most popular consumable for wargaming to give high tier light cruisers now? If you guess radar, you're correct. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I do have a 15 kilometer range on my Schultz right now, so that does help, but, I mean, still, you're engaging a light cruiser by yourself, so that that doesn't work. What you have to do is kind of what I'm doing here. I'm sticking near the team and kind of just chilling with them and going with them and basically acting like a cruiser, which is how you kind of have to play the Schultz and the, the German DDs. Okay, so that that's the main thing, but that my main problem with them. They're meant to go after cruisers, but they can't really do that. The other thing is that, as many of y'all brought up, they do still take up a DD slot. So this is a DD that can't do DD versus DD, they can't cap, they're not the best spotters either because they really have to roll with the team to avoid being crapped on by light cruisers. So they don't spot, they don't take out DDs, but they kill cruisers. That That's like the battleships and cruisers job that's not a destroyers job but they're still in the DD spot so you're still taking up that spot on your team now of course they can cap it's just that they're not the best at it because when they get into those close range engagements with the other DDs y y you kinda die very fast so that's another issue uh, the last issue is that quite simply they're very meticulous to play, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but when you're introducing a new line and such like this that you really have to plan a lot when you're planning out your attacks. And DDs are normally like this too. You can't really go into a situation in a DD and be like, okay, I'm going to go for it. That normally doesn't end well indeed. You have, to, you have to plan your next move. Plan what your escape route is. Plan who you're going to go after. Okay, if he's not there, then what are you going to do? You know, things like that. But the extra show, so with these German DDs, because of how screwed you are if everything doesn't go according to plan. Because they turn like a cruiser, they have the rudder shift time of a cruiser, and they have the speed of a cruiser too. So you don't have that nimbleness and agileness that other DDs have to get themselves out of those bad situations when your plan doesn't go according to plan. So you better darn well have a plan on what to do and it better be foolproof in case it goes sideways. Because if not, you're going to be standing there out in the open with a very large DD that's just going to get dunked on by almost anything. Um, other things from playing these cruisers, uh, yeah, these cruisers, these destroyers, I didn't notice this in my initial review, but they have, like, the Schultz has a 7km AA range, which I thought was a no-no from Wargaming now because of how you can trap planes with the good old AA trap method and that wasn't cool anymore, but then they turn around and give the Schultz a 7km AA range and DFAA. So, oddly enough, they are pretty good with dealing with 
CVs. I mean, of course, you know, depending upon the skill of the CV player, but as the guy you're seeing right now is, is, going, is going to find out, it's it's not a wise thing to go after one of these ships because you turn your A off, your detection range is four kilometers by air, so they're already three kilometers within your A bubble, then you pop it and you pop TFAA, and it's, it's not going to be a wonderful day for him if he's not good at dodging flak. So they have that going for it, which I find... Odd, but I mean, okay. You want to give them decent AA? And again, I'm not saying it's god tier AA. I'm just saying you can kind of do the AA trap, and it kind of works. I mean, this match alone, I, saw, I shot down a fair few amount of planes as well. Um, other than that, too, the turret traverse isn't that great either. Which, again, with the 150 millimeter guns on a DD, that's kind of expected. And the, the Kleber and Cabral also aren't breaking any speed records on their turret traverse either. So they're a very weird ship. That, again, the idea of having a destroyer that's good at dealing with cruisers is a good idea. I like that. The, the, the great AP, the improved AP pens, the approved AP, that's fantastic. And having the bad HE, that's great, too. I mentioned something like this quite some time ago, except in a cruiser class, that, you know, it just focused on having great AP. I think I guess we did get the Soviet cruiser, so there goes that. But still expecting them to go after cruisers with... Not that great of an, an improvement in their armor, without a, an improved damage saturation model, or without just a heal, I don't know how they're expected to take on cruisers. You can't ambush them, but still, even then, in most light cruisers, their, their turret traverse time is pretty insignificant, so they're going to just, you know, melt half of your health away anyway. You know, you can get a jump on them with the torpedoes, which from a close range, they're, they're slow, but I mean, shoving all your torpedoes into a, a cruiser's broadside at close range really doesn't matter how slow or how fast your torpedoes are, you're going to die. So, you could do that, but those situations, again, you know, the, the cruisers have radar, and a lot of times too, the higher tier cruisers have radar and hydro on top of that. So, if it's a decent cruiser player, you aren't going to be catching them off guard that much. And then now you're in a situation where it's you versus a, a cruiser, and you're not really that well equipped to deal with it. So, still, like I said in my Schultz review, they, they definitely need a hill or some improved damage saturation model. And then I think they will be a great class all in all. But still, great idea, terrible execution. And that's my thoughts on these German DDs. Now, they aren't as crappy as you may have read on Reddit or in other comment sections. They have their merits. Like I said, the AP is fantastic. And if you can manage to stay out of, you know, death <laughs> and survive the match, you can get pretty decent games in, term of, in terms of damage. I'm comfortably sitting at around 80 to 90k average damage on these DDs. And I'm not a great DD player. And... When you do get up tiered, I'm sorry, when you do get top tier, you are really, really, really in a good spot there. But of course, with the Schultz, it's a tier 9, you'll be in tier 10 games most of the time. So I'm doing about 80 to 90,000 damage, average damage still in these ships. So it can work, it's just frustrating, and you gotta really be aware of your surroundings. But they could be better, and I, I really don't think giving them a hill would be a big stretch. I mean, it would really go a long way in emphasizing that these cruisers, that these uh, DDs are supposed to go for it and take these risks and go after cruisers and stuff and at least give them a way to recuperate some of that health in the process. You know, guys, that's my thought on the line split after playing it for quite some time. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did like the video, make sure to drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. When I went out to 25,000 subs, we just passed 24,100 a few days ago. I can't thank you guys enough for that. Hope you guys are having a wonderful Thursday. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.